Well, building such an engineering feat takes a workforce that can use both their minds and their hands. Joining me now is our Andy Barth. Well, Rob, I visited Meridian Technology Center in Stillwater this afternoon, and there are students there learning skills that could help them find employment as welders. It's a profession that both pays well and is in high demand. With sparks flying and welding arcs glowing, students at Meridian Technology Center are jump-starting their careers. I started out at Meridian actually in a computer's graphics program, but I don't like sitting down that much. So I guess just ended up coming here just for a career. I need some, something to do for work. So. Josh Howell is a second year student at Meridian Tech and says that his inspiration hits close to home. My uncle, he's been welding all his life. He's, he's one of the workaholic type people. He goes to work for eight hours, welds all that time, he gets off and he has his own shop at home where he welds until he goes to bed. He is a pretty dedicated dude and he uh, inspired me to go into the field and make all the money I can and do what I want with it. From second year veterans to new recruits, Darren Denning has been with Meridian Tech for three weeks and has his own set of aspirations for this opportunity. Uh, I want to be able to be certified and uh, as I, when I graduate from here I want to be able to go out to a place and be confident about getting a job and uh, making a career and hopefully staying there for years. And with all these students come dedicated instructors. John Gibson is the precision metal fabrication instructor at Meridian. We have two types of students. One are your traditional high school students that can come as juniors. Um, they can spend a half a day in, in any program for two years. So their junior year and their senior year. And they'll be completers when they graduate high school. They'll be ready to go out and, and get a job. And then we have the adult students, the non-traditional, that may have you know, decided to make a career change or got laid off from a job and, and they're looking to further enhance their, their skill level. No matter what type of student they are, Gibson says it is a proud moment when they complete the program. The number one goal for us as instructors is to get these guys jobs because they come in here looking to us and they're kind of putting their lives, you know, the next year, two years of their lives is in our hands. So, um, you know, there's, there's some pressure on us because we don't want to screw them up and we want to take them out of here as quick as we can, but yet let them learn as much as they can. And although the economy has seen better days, Gibson says welders have nothing to worry about. We've had welding for a long time um, and we're going to continue to have welding. As long as there's infrastructure built in, in America or worldwide, um, there's always going to be welding. But you can't replace it. You know, we can automate it, automate it um, in, in certain areas of industry, but you're never going to replace the guy getting out there and dropping the hood and welding. So. There's always going to be a need for it. Now, we should note that TransCanada, the company constructing the Keystone Pipeline, has donated a section of pipe for students here to work on. So just how much can some of these students eventually make? Well, it's typical for students coming out of this program to earn anywhere from $10 to $15 an hour. But one student who completed his certification has gone to work in New York State earning $40 to $50 an hour. Wow, and that's just right out of school. Not bad money at all. Thank you so much, Andy. Thanks.